The Cambrian period, between 542 and 488 million years ago, was one of rapid plate movement, most of these was an extraordinary explosion in animal diversity, many of these new forms evolved the ability to biomineralize, this probably occurred in response to the evolution of predators, soft-bodied animals from this period are preserved in localities such as Canada's Burgess Shale and Chenjiang in China. During this period of sea level rise, continents were inundated, apart from Gondwana, eastern Siberia and Kazakhstan which were mountainous, life proliferated in warm, shallow water marine environments, complex animals with mineralized skeletons evolved, such as sponges, corals and arthropods, changes in ocean chemistry, greater diversity of plankton species at the base of the food chain, and pressure from predators may all have contributed to the Cambrian explosion. Cambrian has a high global temperatures, one estimate suggests that by the late Cambrian these averaged 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, many low-lying continents experienced arid conditions produced by wind blowing from the land and low rainfall, few indicators for hot, humid climates have been found in the Cambrian geological record, although there are examples in Laurentia of laterite and bauxite, known to form in the tropics in these conditions, with no continents located directly over the poles, and oceans covering a larger part of the globe, the climate is likely to have been relativity equitable overall. The beginning of the Cambrian witnessed an incredible event in evolution. In just a few million years animal groups, from worms to fishes, appeared. Microscopic remains of these creatures have been remarkably well preserved. These small, shelly fossils are evidence of this avalanche of evolution. Before the Cambrian, most animals lacked either jaws or a through gut, which meant they had no anus. The evolution of chewing, and then of predation, started an arms race that rapidly transformed ecosystems around the world. Among the first tooth-like elements to appear were those of Protorzina, belonging to a creature similar to a modern arrow worm, external skeleton. S quickly evolved for protection, the tiny, cap-shaped shells of Myconella. For example, were made from clusters of spines called sclerites. Later, other animals, such as brachiopods, merged their sclerites to form a single, solid shell. Fossils of soft tissues, including the cyanobacteria and other algae, can be found in Cambrian phosphates, but after the Cambrian, such remarkable preservation became rare, possibly because more scavenging was taking place on the seafloor. A multitude of new, small organisms, collectively known as plankton, began to drift freely through the Cambrian seas and oceans, transforming the food chain. The great oceans provided a valuable means of dispersal, as well as a degree of protection from grazers and predators. Radiolarian zooplankton, with their delicate silica skeletons, appeared and fed on other small, drifting organisms. These zooplankton began to form the biological silica deposits called radiolarian cherts, Diverse types of phytoplankton also thrived, using sunlight to make their own food by means of photosynthesis. Many secreted a protective armor called resting cysts and fell to the seafloor, where they were readily preserved. All of these creatures provided an abundant supply of food for the new types of animals that appeared during the Cambrian explosion. This microfossil appears near the base of Cambrian rocks, each tooth-like protoconodont is made of calcium phosphate, and has a hollow basal portion for attachment. It is shield-shaped in cross-section and has a long, curved spine. Occasionally, protorzina are found in clusters that closely resemble the portcullis-like jaws of modern arrowworms. This suggests that this was an early predator. This cap-shaped fossil had weakly mineralized shell that was phosphatized after its death. The pineapple-like shell was made from tightly packed spines called sclerites. At first these sclerites were not strongly fused together. Sometimes they are found separately. After several million years of evolution, the spines became more strongly fused into a single, rigid shell that was similar in shape to a modern limpet. In Greenland, examples have been found where the slug-like owner had been carrying two Myconella-like caps, surrounded by a skirt of siphogonochytes like sclerites. This complex arrangement is a reminder that much experimentation was still taking place at this time. Myconella probably grazed on algae that grew on the Cambrian seafloor. This tubular fossil had a calcareous shell made of aragonite, 
in cross-section it is a distinctive trilobed, cloverleaf shape. Like many small, shelly fossils from the early Cambrian, its biological affinities remain uncertain, but it could have been close to the cnidarian groups of jellyfish and corals. It may have lived in colonies, embedded in the sediment, and feeding on organic matter in the water column. Modern-looking mollusk shells evolved with surprising rapidity during the course of the early Cambrian period. This resulted in coiled forms, such as the one shown here, which appeared across a wide area from Canada to China. It occurred alongside other mollusks that crudely resemble much younger bivalves and even coiled cephalopods. Although little Aldonella looks similar to a modern garden snail, there is no evidence that it was closely related to Gasteropoda. It probably grazed on detritus near the surface of the Cambrian seafloor. The Cambrian was a critical time in evolutionary history because diverse marine invertebrates began to appear. Some had eyes and strong jaws that enabled them to live as the first active predators. Other Cambrian evolutionary fauna, such as trilobites, flourished, but declined from the Ordovician onward. The Cambrian explosion was the first truly significant evolutionary event in the history of life, heralding the origin and proliferation of hard-shelled marine invertebrates. First, following the extinction of the Ediacaran fauna about 543 million years ago, came the small, shelly fossils, which are represented by phosphatic horns and coils, plates and tubes. These persisted until around 525 million years ago, when the first trilobites, inarticulate brachiopods and other hard-shelled fossils started to appear. But these represent a mere fraction of the vast diversity of Cambrian life. Archaeocyathids we re the first reef building organisms they were confined to tropical areas and were only in existence for a relatively short period but they diversified rapidly during this time some forms were solitary while others were colonial they were made up of two calcite cones arranged one inside the other with a space between them the cones were held apart by calcitic septa that crossed the space the outer cone attached to the seabed by a root-like structure at its base Atoya is one of the fossils found in Canada's Burgess Shale that can be associated with a living animal group, the marine priapulid worms. Atoya is the most common Burgess Shale priapulid worm, with around 1,500 known specimens. It gathered food with a tube-like organ called a proboscis, which was equipped with spiny hooks and could be turned inside out. Many fossilized specimens have a strongly curved body, which has led to suggestions that, like its modern counterparts, Atoya lived in a U-shaped burrow and extended its proboscis to catch prey. Several specimens have been found with their gut contents intact, which include small, shelly hyulithids and even members of their own species, which may indicate that Atoya was cannibalistic. Ecmatocrinus is an unusual fossil, found only in the Burgess Shale Formation in Canada, the surface of its long, conical body was covered with thin, polygonal plates or scales that were arranged irregularly. There were seven to nine plated arms or tentacles that were attached to the top of the body. Long, thin, non-mineralized branches occurred on alternate sides of these arms. Ecmatocrinus has been difficult to classify. When it was first described it was thought to be a crinoid, but the absence of distinctive echinoderm features, such as five-fold symmetry, has led to other interpretations. Some paleontologists suggest it could actually be an octocoral. Lingalella was an inarticulate brachiopod, meaning that it used muscles to hold its valves in place, rather than teeth or sockets. It was attached to the substrate by a fleshy stalk that emerged from an opening in its pedicle valve. Lingalella's shell was elongated and the beak area was pointed. The surface of the shell had fine. Growth lines and fossils show delicate radial striation on the inner layers. Bohemiella was an orthid brachiopod a group of articulate brachiopods that lived throughout the Paleozoic era its valves were elongated in a crossways direction the pedicle valve was less concave than the brachial valve, or sometimes almost flat there was a small pair of teeth on the pedicle valve and corresponding sockets in the brachial valve these had long projections on their inside edges to hold the teeth in position. 
Wiwaxia was a striking animal with a body that was symmetrical about its length elliptical viewed from the top and squarish and cross section its upper surface was covered with overlapping rows of protective armor like plates called sclerites and two rows of long spines its lower surface lacked any form of protection Wiwaxia's mouth contained a food gathering apparatus with two or three rows of rear facing conical teeth these were probably used for scraping algae or bacteria from the seabed or for collecting food particles from the surrounding water because of the similarities between this apparatus and the redula of mollusks it is thought that wewaxia may be related to mollusks an alternative hypothesis suggests that it is related to worms Early Cambrian bivalves are not only very rare only two genera are known but also very small Pohedaia is currently the oldest bivalve ever discovered its shell was almost circular with well-defined beaks on each valve and a straight hinge line the outside of the shell had growth increments and some faint radial ribs internally shell had two adductor muscles that opened and closed the valves the hinge had five or six teeth and sockets in each valve helped the valves align. Helicoplicus was a bizarre echinoderm that represents a very early and ultimately unsuccessful body plan unlike other echinoderms it lacked radial symmetry of any kind tiny plates were arranged spirally around its shell which in its resting state was pear-shaped in fossils the shell plates are usually found separated suggesting that they were not fused together instead the body had the capacity to expand and contract. Greater than and during expansion the plate separated. When Hallucigenia was first studied in the 1970s, reconstructions showed the animal walking on rigid, stilt-like, paired limbs, with a single row of fleshy projections along the top of its back. Nothing of its kind had ever been found before. However, later discoveries showed that earlier reconstructions had, in fact, turned the organism upside down. Hallucigenia had an elongated body, with a rounded head at one end, and a long, fleshy tail. It had seven pairs of stiff, pointed spines along the upper side of its body, along with a cluster of small projections, situated close to its rear end. Opabenia is one of the strangest animals to have been found in Canada's Burgess Shale fossil bed. Unlike any other, its head had five prominent eyes, two sets of pairs, and one eye that was central, Extending from the front of its head was a long, flexible, trunk-like feature, or proboscis, which ended in a pod-shaped organ bearing small spines that were probably used to grasp prey. Opabenia would have used its proboscis to pass its prey up to its mouth. Its elongated body was composed of 16 segments, each of which possessed a flap-like lateral lobe with gills on the underside. Its tail had three flaps that projected from either side. Marella is the most abundant Burgess shale fossil, with over 15,000 known specimens. Curiously, this Canadian site is the only place it has been found in the world. Marella was given the informal name lace crab by the American paleontologist Charles Walcott, due to its feathery appearance. It had two distinctive pairs of large, backward-facing spines, one pair running alongside the body, the other, above it, two pairs of antennae arose from the front of its body, one very long, the other shorter and stouter. The body was composed of 20 segments, each of which had pairs of identical limbs suggest that it was a primitive arthropod. Marilla is thought to have swum along the seabed or just above it, feeding on tiny particles of organic material. Its jointed legs contained feathery gill branches that formed part of its respiratory system. The teeth-like projections on the inner pair of spines are evident in this illustration. Olenellus was a trilobite with a semicircular head shield and a tapering glabella with four pairs of backward pointing furrows. Its eyes were crescent shaped, and their front ends merged with the glabella's frontal lobe. Its thorax had 18 segments, and the third was wider and longer than the others, and ended in a spine. One of the earliest trilobites in the geological record, Olenellus was a key fossil used by Canadian geologist Tuzo Wilson to show that there was once a proto-Atlantic ocean that separated much of continental North America and Western Europe. Paradoxides was one of the largest known genera of trilobites, and it was probably a predator, high in the sea. Ambrian food chain, Underneath the widest part of the glabella lay the hypostome, a large, plate-like structure supporting the stomach, whose size and shape suggests predatory activity.
Olenus is a trilobite fossil commonly found in dark mudstones, which were deposited on the seafloor in environments with low oxygen levels. It had up to 15 thoracic segments, with very wide pleural or side lobes. These are thought to have supported extended gills, which would have helped the animal absorb the maximum amount of oxygen possible in such an environment. Evidence also suggests that Olenus and its relatives may have developed a symbiotic relationship with sulfur bacteria, either by feeding on them directly, or by absorbing nutrients directly from them. This trilobite fossil is commonly found in large clusters in Cambrian rocks in the Prague district of the Czech Republic. Many specimens are complete but lack free cheeks, which suggests that they were molts, and that the animals congregated to shed their old exoskeletons in order to grow in size. Ellipsocephalus had a prominent, smooth glabella with slightly concave sides, like Olinus its eyes were small and crescent-shaped, the border of the headshield was narrow, defined by a rather narrow, shallow furrow. Elrathia is one of the best-known trilobites in North America, its headshield was semicircular, with a short, conical glabella and two pairs of short, shallow furrows, the crescent-shaped eyes were set some distance from the glabella, near the front, there were 13 segments in its thorax, and its tail shield was much smaller than its head. Tomagnostis is one of many agnostoid trilobites with an almost global distribution, and is thus valuable in correlating Cambrian rocks across wide areas. It probably lived in the open ocean, but it occurs as a fossil in association with more local trilobites in different regions. Anastoids were highly specialized and distinctive members of the trilobite group. Anomalocaris was the largest animal in the Cambrian ecosystem that became fossilized in what is now the Burgess Shale in British Columbia. The animal's head had two eyes, in front of which was a pair of segmented, downward curving appendages, each of the S. Eggments of these appendages had a pair of spiny projections on its underside. Anomalocaris's mouth was situated on the underside of the head, and consisted of a circle of elongated plates. Behind each eye were three small flaps. The body was divided into eight segments, each of which had side flaps, and the maul tail featured an upturned fan of flaps. Fragments of Anomalocaris were originally thought to belong to separate animals. The front appendages were interpreted as the segmented abdomen of a shrimp-like crustacean, while the circular mouthparts were thought to be a jellyfish. Although it was probably not the swiftest of swimmers, many scientists believe that Anomalocaris was at the top of the food chain in the Cambrian seas. Its large size, of up to one meter or more in length, and its formidable circular mouthparts allowed it to capture smaller prey, such as trilobites, with ease. The early Cambrian was a crucial period in the history of life on Earth. Witnessing an explosion in animal diversity, about 540 million years ago the seas were home to the first wave of new animal groups, some of which would eventually die out, but others would lead to the evolution of the first vertebrates. The start of the Cambrian is marked by the appearance of a vast array of animal forms in marine sedimentary rocks that are unknown in older rocks, this explosion in diversity saw the arrival of most of the major groups of animals' body plans, they included the first chordates, animals that at some point in their life cycle possess a notochord, the precursor of a backbone, and the first vertebrates. Vertebrates are a group of animals that possess a backbone, which surrounds the notochord and provides support for the body, they also have a skull that encloses the brain, eyes, olfactory organs and internal ears, Another important characteristic of vertebrates is that parts of the head, gill arches, and nerves form from neural crest cells. These cells migrate from the nerve cord early in the development of the embryo and travel to different parts of the animal to form these structures. Other vertebrate features include the nervous control of the heart, a set of muscles to control eye movement, at least two semicircular canals in the inner ear, and a lateral line system running along the head and body that has sensory organs called neuromasts. All extinct jawless fish are vertebrates, of the two living groups, lampreys are considered to be vertebrates, but many authorities exclude hagfish do have a cranium. A marine animal that lived about 530 million years ago, Pichia is one of the earliest known chordates, and belongs to the subphylum cephalochordate, 
in appearance, Picia is similar to the modern lancelet, differing only in having a pair of antenna-like structures on its head. Picia was small and delicate, with a dorsal nerve cord running from front to back under which lay the supporting notochord. V-shaped muscles ran along the sides of its flattened body. A narrow fin membrane extended down the rear two-thirds of the body, broadening into a single tail fin that tapered to a point. The oldest vertebrates by about 30 million years, Millicunmingia and Hycauathus were tiny, jawless, marine fish. Millicunmingia was similar in form to Hycauathus but less slender. It had a distinct head, and its body had backward-facing, V-shaped muscle blocks. However, it differed from Hycauathus in having pouch-like structures associated with its five or six gills. Millicunmingia fossils suggest that it had a cartilaginous skull and some primitive vertebral elements, some parts of the digestive system are preserved, but not the mouth, and no tail parts have been found. It had a triangular dorsal fin that inclined gently upward a short distance behind the head. Farther back, on the underside of the body, were fin folds. Hycauathus is thought to be one of the most primitive fish without jaws. Preserved in the 530 million years old marine sediments of Chengjiang, it is unlike any other agnathan. It had a rounded extension to the head which bore sensory organs. The eyes, and possibly nasal sacs and otic capsules associated with hearing, on the sides of its body, it had at least six, and possibly up to nine, gill slits supported by gill bars. V-shaped muscle blocks are also visible in places. Hycauathus had a notochord but there is also evidence of vertebrate-like elements, similar to those seen in modern lampreys.